Hello, and welcome to episode 37 of Sarastro's Star Wars Painting Series. In this episode, we're going to paint Verena Talos from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Verena has a striking pose, quite a subtle colour palette, and a range of textures, making her an interesting figure to paint. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I chose to prime Verena in black, followed with a grey and white zenithal pre-shade, and you can refer to episode 35 for a more detailed explanation of how to do this. We'll then apply the base colours, and I've chosen to wet blend the shadows and highlights for the overcoat and trousers. Next, we'll provide some shades for the remaining areas of the miniature, followed with some highlights. Our finishing touches will include painting the rebel symbol on the left shoulder pad, as well as providing a scenic base, which I've also chosen to add some snow to. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting Verena's overcoat and trousers. We've covered similar fabrics and colours in previous episodes, typically using a base colour, shade and highlight approach, and, in the case of Lando, some very careful layering of glazes. For the sake of variety, and to speed things up, I've chosen to wet blend the main tones on Verena's coat but you could easily take the same approach as we did for someone like Loku, if you prefer. The main colour I'm using for the fabric will be a roughly equal mix of Steel Legion Drab and Zandri Dust, and I'm thinning all of these colours with a few drops of glaze medium to extend the drying time. For the darker areas, I'm mixing roughly equal measures of Steel Legion Drab and Rhinoxide, along with a hint of Cantor Blue. I'm also preparing a little Ushabdi bone to use for some final highlights. I'm starting by painting the darker areas, which include the lapels and the shadowed underside of the coat. I'm then giving my brush a quick wipe before applying some of my lighter colour and blending the tones together on the model. I'm now doing the same on the back of the cloak. Notice I'm simply wiping the brush on some paper towel rather than cleaning it in water. This is mostly because I want to avoid thinning the paints any further. When it comes to blending the colours, I will often use a small cross-hatching motion to initially mix the tones sometimes followed with some broader strokes to smooth things out.
I'm now going to paint the arms and legs in the same way. Once dry, we can rework any areas we're not so happy with. I'm now adding a few small highlights by mixing some Ushabti bone into the Steel Legion Drab and Zandri Dust mix. and I almost forgot to paint the collar. Finally, I'm going to mix my dark and mid-tones and use this to highlight the raised pads on the lapels. With the overcoat and trousers complete, we can now paint the rest of the base colours. I'm starting with the purple top, and I'm using Demonette Hide. We can also paint the stripe on the trousers with this. Although it's not marked on the sculpt, the box art illustration also shows a stripe on the right leg, so you could add one there too if you wish. Next, I'm going to mix equal quantities of Rhinox Hide and Monfang Brown, and I'm using this for the boots, belt, holster, and the knife sheath. For the metallic chest plate and shoulder pads, I'm using lead belcher mixed with a little carrick stone and a hint of demonette hide. The purple isn't essential, however.
For the dark portion of the gun and the dagger handle, I'm using a mix of lead belcher and black. We can also paint the headset with this. For the tip of the gun and the knife blade, I'm using Stormhost Silver. This can also be used for the belt buckle. I'm now going to paint the gloves using a roughly equal mix of Zandri Dust and Screaming Skull. Since Verena has quite a pale skin tone, I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone for my base. For the hair, I'm starting with a base of Balor Brown. I'm then going to mix in some Screaming Skull in a couple of stages to create some pre-shade highlights. This is something I often like to do with quite textured areas like fur or hair, so that we can leave the shade to articulate the texture and leave us with minimal highlighting to do later on. With the base colours complete, we're ready to add some shade. In no particular order, I'm going to begin by shading the face with some Reichland Flesh Shade. Next I'm going to use some pure Nuln Oil for the gun and dagger. Finally, I'm going to create a 2 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil, which I'm also toning down with a little medium. I'm using this to shade the rest of the miniature, except for the overcoat and trousers, which already have sufficient contrast. This means shading the boots, armour, accessories, belt and hair.
I'm also using this to define the belt strap on the back of the coat. I'm providing a second application to further darken the shadow of the lower torso, as well as the boots. Once dry, we're ready to add some highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the boots and accessories, and I'm starting with the original Rhinox Hide and Mournfang Brown mix. I'm now going to lighten this with the addition of Wild Rider Red in a couple of stages. When deciding how bright to take our highlights, it's useful to consider what kind of texture we're rendering. For this shiny mahogany leather, we can ramp the highlights up quite sharply to create the impression of a glossy finish. Here I'm adding some pure white to create a few specular glints of light. Working my way up the figure, I'm now going to highlight the purple top with the original Demonette Hide. I'm now going to lighten this with the addition of a little white. We can also highlight the stripe on the leg with this.
For the metal areas, I'm mixing almost equal quantities of Stormhost Silver and Carrick Stone. Because the armour is quite weathered looking, we can stipple the paint on quite roughly. I'm applying this just to the upper portion of the breastplate and the tops of the shoulder pads. I'm also using this to add a few small highlights to the gun and the knife. For the gloves, I'm using the original Zandri Dust and Screaming Skull mix. and I'm brightening this slightly by mixing in some additional Screaming Skull. Next I'm going to highlight the face, starting with a reapplication of Cadian Flesh Tone, which I'm using to cover most of the surface. I'm then jumping to pure Kislev Flesh, and I'm still covering a good portion of the face, but building the tone up more on the places that catch the most light. Finally, I'm using Flayed One Flesh to provide the brightest highlights to the top of the nose, cheekbones and tip of the chin. Finally, we can provide a few gentle highlights to the hair using a fairly light mix of Balor Brown and Screaming Skull. We're now ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to pick out the eyes with Vallejo's Ivory.
and I'm going to attempt to suggest the pupils with a small touch of German grey. I'm now tidying this left eye with a touch of skin tone. Verena also has quite a prominent and angular eyebrow, which I'm going to sketch in with some thinned rhinoxide. I'm now going to mix some Cadian flesh tone with the rhinoxide and brush on some eyeshadow. And here I'm just reinforcing the eyebrow. Next I'm going to paint the rebel symbol on the left shoulder pad, using Mephiston Red. I'm using the same approach that we used for Biff Bodrick in episode 27, which means first sketching a thin vertical line, followed by two curved arms either side. We can then carefully fatten the lines to form the rebel symbol. Once we're happy with the shape, we can use some Evil Sun Scarlet to gently brighten the central area. And I'm going to finish the shoulder pad off by providing a couple of scratches with the metallic highlight tone. We can also do some neatening up of the edges with this. Once we're done painting, it's time to protect the miniature with a matte spray. And I'm once again rebasing my hero as detailed in episode 10. I've also chosen to add some half melted snow effects using Citadel's Valhallen Blizzard. This can be simply applied neat from the pot and you could use as much or as little as you like. The product has a slightly fluffy granular texture, just like the real thing. A damp brush can be used to create a slightly more slushy, partially melted look. And this completes Verena Talos. Thank you for watching, I do hope you have enjoyed the episode. Don't forget, you can find details of all the equipment used in the video description below, along with links to my social media accounts where you can keep up to date with what I'm working on next. As always, my very special thanks go to the wonderful patrons who are financing this work. Although I say it every episode, I can't really say it enough. Thanks to their support, we recently broke another funding milestone, which means I've once again been able to upgrade my video camera so all of my viewers will be able to enjoy even better quality videos from the next episode. So once again, thank you for enabling me to continue making and improving these videos. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!